So welcome, Sarah Philippe, to the programme this afternoon. You're on Elastic FM with Elaine Godley. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Elaine. So nice to be here with you. And you're in America at the moment. Whereabouts? I'm in Washington State, so on the West Coast. And it's about 7 a.m. here. It's still dark out. <laughs> oh, sure. here. All right. Thank, thank you for your... Uh, dedication to be up at, at uh, this time uh, talking to us. So um, we're, we're going to be talking about breast um, implants and what happens when things go wrong. So to, to start off with, um, I believe you were originally a nurse. Yeah, I uh, worked as a nurse for about 11, almost 12 years. Um, but during during that time, probably around year six is when I started um, noticing my health going downhill and I started making kind of a career shift um, slowly but surely. So, um, so yeah, I still am a nurse. I just don't really practice quite as much as I used to. I'm more in the health and wellness field now. Okay, so when you say your health is going downhill, what, what, what do you mean by that? Well, um, I got breast implants in 2011, and uh, probably around six months after that, rough, give or take, um, I started developing symptoms that were new to me, and um, I started off with a lot of symptoms that were commonly found with Hashimoto's, so like um, anxiety, hair loss, um, mood issues, um, just severe exhaustion, heart palpitations, um, just feeling like I could never get enough sleep, um, really some depression, um, sexual uh, libido like was gone, uh, hormone dysregulation, that kind of thing. Couldn't find a doctor who would take me seriously. They wanted me to go to counseling. <laughs> Because all my lab work looked mm. normal, of course, normal <laughs> wasn't mm. always optimal. Yes, um, but I did have antibodies, and I did find a doctor who would take me seriously and address um, that by just a prescription, basically, which is, wasn't what I was looking for. Um, anyway, I went on to develop a lot more symptoms through through the progression of this chronic illness. I ended up developing. Um, a lot of gut issues, so um, gas, bloating, diarrhea, um, really, really painful um, um, abdomen as the day would progress and I would continue to eat more. So those symptoms line up with SIBO, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth. I ended up getting diagnosed with that because I knew the symptoms and I knew what to ask for um, with the doctor. So um, ended up being treated for that, didn't get better, um, did a lot of other testing, like hormone testing and um, stool analysis and um, looking at the adrenals. Um, and I had, a, I had pretty severe hormone imbalance. My adrenals were just shot very much cortisol, which explains why I couldn't work out anymore. It would just make me feel so fatigued and irritable. My heart was just racing like crazy. Um, let's see what else. I started having like mental awareness of like every single breath that I took, which is just maddening, really. I mean, you're not supposed to be aware of that. That's an autonomic response. Um, what else? So severe anxiety to the point where I couldn't go out in public um, without feeling like I was going to have a panic attack. Sensitivity to light and sound and smells, like any kind of chemical smell, I could hardly even stand it. Just made me feel awful. Um, Goodness, that's that's a huge, sort of huge range of um, things that were wrong. You must have been it must have been really frustrating for you and also oh. for your husband very difficult to live with with all those things going on yeah and you know I didn't really know what was going on um I couldn't really find the answers that I was looking for um when I would get testing done and I ended up discovering that I also had Lyme disease um and parasites and bacteria uh, dysbiotic bacteria in my gut 
And so there were a lot of things going on that were creating all of my symptoms. And um, so I started looking for my own answers because I couldn't figure out I wanted to know what the root cause was. I didn't want to just treat the symptoms with a pill. Um, and so that's when I um, found uh, functional diagnostic nutrition, which I'll just shorten to FDN because it's easier. <laughs> and I went through that program as a, as a practitioner because I figured, well, if I'm going to try and figure out what's wrong with me, then I want to be able to help other people do the same thing you know, figure out what's going on with their health and why they're having symptoms, get to the root cause and be able to reverse those issues naturally. Um, and so going through that program, I did a lot of the testing on myself, which is when I discovered, you know, all of the things that were going on, the SIBO, the parasites, the Lyme, the hormone imbalances, all of um, And I addressed those issues holistically and I did get better but there was a point at which I couldn't progress any further. I was just kind of stuck. And so I still had some symptoms I was dealing with. And I know my um, mentor at the time who was helping me uh, mentor me through this program um, suggested maybe getting my breast implants removed. And that was back in probably 2013 or 14. And I, at the time, just wasn't, I wasn't ready to hear that. I just couldn't. So just 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 rewind a moment if if we may you when did you have the pressed implants put in in the first place 2011 okay so this is two years later um that you it was probably three years later it was probably 2014 if I'm remembering right okay and were were the breast implants um, a cosmetic thing or because of the medical condition what well, it's not kind of every day that a woman has breast implants yeah, it was something that I had always been self-conscious about since I was a teenager, a uh, very young teenager. Um, I just, you know, it was something I had wanted and wished for all my life, basically. <laughs> and um, it was a cosmetic thing. It was a vanity thing. And it's just so unfortunate that um, you have to go down that road to learn a life lesson about just loving yourself and accepting yourself the way God made you. But um, yeah, I, I got really into fitness and lifting weights and that's when that desire for a breast augmentation became a reality for me. Okay, so, so fast forward then back to, back to 2014. So your mentor who was teaching you with the FDN uh, Functional Diagnostic mm -hmm. Medicine then suggested, yeah. okay, if you've got so far, maybe it is your implants mm -hmm. right and I, I i had thought that before he mentioned that i you know had scoured the internet trying to find anything that could link maybe my my breast implants to what i was going through because i just kind of had that like intuition i wonder you know if because i didn't have any of these symptoms before i got my implants and so i wondered if that could be it but i didn't really find anything it was just nothing out there at that point it was too uh, far back where before people were really talking about this. Um, and then there was a point where after he had mentioned that I found an interview from uh, Dr. Mercola's website with him. So it was him interviewing Dr. Kolb, who is an explant surgeon. Um, and there she talked all about breast implant illness. And I thought, I have to get them out. This is crazy that I haven't gotten them out yet. Why, why am I waiting? So I actually had a consultation with her over the phone and was like all ready to go for it. And I just, I couldn't do it. I, I just, for some reason, I just thought, um, this is so much money to spend and such an ordeal to go through. Like, what if I still haven't discovered something that's, that's, you know, contributing to the remainder of my symptoms. So I kept I kept that on the back burner as a possibility, but I kept pushing through, trying to restore my health without that um, surgery. And it was really hard to get to that place where I was willing to acknowledge um, that I did this to myself, <laughs> you know, um, that I had spent our hard earned money and um, on something for vanity and, you know, just to have to go and spend more and more and more money year by year on trying to figure out what was going on and trying to work on restoring my health and um 
and then you know later on to go and spend even more money getting an explant and recovering from that and it was just a really hard and emotional time um when i finally did make that decision uh to go ahead and get them out um it was it was a difficult place coming from really wanting this to i can't even stand that i made that decision you know and what am i doing <laughs> so yeah there was a lot of life lessons learned there and um what really got me to that place is to the place of, you know, being ready was um, the infertility that I was experiencing. Um, my husband and I really wanted to have children and we'd been trying for a year. And the other thing that I knew I had probably developed was endometriosis. And I didn't really have proof because you have to have a laparoscopy, an exploratory laparoscopy mm -hmm. to even know for sure if you have that um, and I did, wasn't willing to go through that at the time but knowing that that was likely the cause I did end up going through that laparoscopy it was after my surgery to get explant but um, just knowing that like the breast implants probably were contributing to that development um, because I never had any issues before um, and just thinking about the fact that we really wanted to have kids I couldn't get pregnant and then also the fact that there's so many heavy metals and toxins in breast implants. And I worried that if I were to get pregnant, what would happen to a developing child or a breastfeeding child being exposed to that chronically? Um, and I just didn't think I could forgive myself if I had caused any kind of issues for a child. So um, that was kind of the tipping point for me where I was like, okay, I, I just need to do it. I need to get these out. I need to know once and for all that, um, that this is the contributing factor to the, the breakdown of my body, basically. Um, and so that's kind of when I just made the decision to get them out. And I got them out a month later. So it was like a quick, once I made that decision, mm -hmm. I was done with it. <laughs> Timing is everything, isn't it? When you have to make key decisions, you've got yeah. opportunities, cost, um, but timing is a, is an absolutely massive thing. You might have the money and the the opportunity, but if the timing isn't right for you personally and, and your husband as well, of course, mm -hmm. is part and parcel of this. So I guess he's a happy bunny now. Has he got his wife back? He does. He does, and he is actually going to write a blog post for my for my website, just talking about how much change he's seen in me in the past year and. Yeah, he's very happy to have me back. <laughs> Brilliant. And what is your website, Sarah? My website is reversingbreastimplantillness.com. Okay, reversing breast illness. Reversing breast implant illness. Implant illness. Oh, reversing yeah. breast implant illness dot com okay so do you find yourself helping people all over the world then with this with this issue? I do. Um, you know, it wasn't until recently that I started helping people that are international to me. Um, and I just, I just started working with someone from New Zealand and I just started working with someone from Australia. So, so yeah, I can do that because of, you know, the great World Wide web and our mm -hmm. ability to have a conversation like we are right now. Um, and so, yeah, I'm able to do that, which is really awesome. So what, what, what can you do for people um, on, on, on the web? Is it, is it a case of a conversation? Because presumably you can't test them. You, you have your uh, diagnostic testing equipment, but presumably you can't use it. Or, or, or can you? I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I work with people on a couple of different levels. So um, the first way is just like a one-on-one -on -one kind of close um, relationship, a coaching relationship, basically, where... Um, I'm collecting a lot of detailed health history. Um, and along with that, I'm collecting, um, you know, each person's personal story from birth until now, like their life story. Because I don't believe that breast implant illness happens in isolation of anything else. I think that it's a contributing factor and there are other factors at play that allow that breakdown of the body to start occurring. And so I kind of, I like to get all the information from someone, um, you know, hear all about their any any potential stressor that they've been through in life that could have contributed to the de development of symptoms and um and then i do recommend lab work um so functional lab work not typically the things you're going to find at a regular doctor 
but things that look at your body, how well your body is actually functioning um, from a more holistic perspective. Um, and I can do labs like that from afar. We just ship the kits that you need um, to your home. And they're usually things that can be done at home. Sometimes they require a blood draw, but um, not frequently. And then I get the results and I put all of those things together. So the lab results, the information from the health history and your narrative, your self narrative. And then we, I come up with a plan for how we're gonna address each thing step by step and start to restore health. And that always does include detox work because of all the toxins we're exposed to with breast implants. Even saline has a silicone shell so it is so important to make sure you're doing some detox work, proper detox work. There's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet. There is, isn't there? So for, for the benefit of the listeners, what do you mean by detox? So we want to make sure you're pulling out um, toxins and heavy metals from the body, not just from the gut, but inside your cells, your tissues, your organs, your brain. Um, a lot of the brain, like the neurological type symptoms, like brain fog and forgetfulness and, um, you know, just having trouble learning new information and that kind of stuff. I, did, I struggled with all of that. And it's a result of having toxins stored in the brain. Our brain is 70% fat. And that's where fat is a, the place where a lot of the toxins get stored. So the detox needs to occur at that level as well. What are, what are the easy, to, maybe the top one or two, three things that people can do to detox at home? Um, I would say um, simple things that, are, um, that don't change between people are going to be um, like lymph, dry brushing, so lymphatic brushing. Um, that's really helpful. Your lymph is like a trash can, so you want to make sure you're moving it. Um, Infrared sauna is really great. So far infrared, not near infrared. Near infrared is better for um, anti-aging and wound healing, but far infrared has had a lot of studies done about detox and how it affects the body's ability to remove metals. Um, and they've actually found metals in people's sweat after coming out of a far infrared sauna. So that is another way. And then I think it's important to just make sure the detox pathways are all open and functioning well. So making sure you're getting enough water so that your kidneys have enough water to process toxins and um, making sure you're having enough bowel movements a day. So toxins will get reabsorbed through the gut if you're not excreting the waste um, regularly. So I like to say at least one a day, preferably three. Um, formed, of course, we don't want loose stools. Um, and then um, a lot of people with breast implant illness have the MTHR, MTF, MTHFR mutation, the gene mutation, and um, that does affect your ability to detox. And it does improve once you start pulling out toxins, but um, supporting that with um, methylated folate is really important. Um, as far as detox goes though beyond that um, it's important to make sure you have an individualized approach I don't believe in protocols that are you know one size fits all um, so in my experience it's better to tailor a detox program to what a particular person needs and so um, true binders are really important which is something I talk about a lot on my website there's a lot of binders out there so-called binders out there like chlorella and cilantro and spirulina, which I don't particularly believe in because it's a food that gets digested in your gut. It doesn't cross the, um, the gut barrier to get inside your cells and in your body's tissues and brain to pull up metals. It can work great in the gut for binding toxins in the gut, but it doesn't leave the gut. So we want something that's going to actually get inside your cells, be able to penetrate the cell membranes to pull out toxins from the cellular at the cellular level and and how to how do people do that is that something that they maybe they need to speak to somebody like you rather than try yeah. and do things on their own and use dr google yeah i don't recommend going through a detox program on your own because it is it, it does need to be individualized and people can start experiencing a lot of detox reaction and not really know what to do about that and that's kind of where i come in and helping people make adjustments, do a little course correction if needed, um, 
and then um, help people through working through those symptoms and knowing, you know, how to make changes so that they are not having as many symptoms and can handle a detox. Yeah, that's great advice. So do you also recommend that people have their breast implants removed as well? Absolutely. Um, I can start working with people before they have their breast implants removed, but typically I don't really start a whole lot of work with them until after they've been removed because with the source still inside um, the body, you really can't affect much change. And that's kind of what I learned from my own experience as well. Um, I did a lot of the things that um, I now recommend after explant, before I explanted, and it wasn't as effective as it could have been. Right. I, I suppose it's like treating something while the tap's still running. If, you know, the water's exactly. still going in, it's not going to, you know, the bath is never going to empty, is it? Right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. And you certainly look a picture of health. So uh, hopefully <laughs> we'll be um, hearing about the pitter patter of little feet soon as well with all of that uh, cleansing you. you've been doing. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. So um, I asked guests to come up with two songs. Um, the two songs you've suggested, Demi Lovato, The Skyscraper. Uh, why did you choose that song, Sarah? Well, um, because I think it's a great message of hope. Um, and also, you know, that like we can get knocked down by things in life, whether it be, um, you know, just things that happen in life or chronic illness but it's good to know that we can get back up again and we can, you know, heal our bodies and rise above that and, um, and get past it. Okay. Wonderful. And the other one you've chosen is Katy Perry singing firework. Well, um, that one I like for the reason that, uh, well, I, I just think that, um, basically, you can let your light shine about whatever things that you've learned through your experience. So you have not gone through what you've gone through for nothing. Mm -hmm. I believe that there's greater purpose in what people have gone through. And for me, that was learning all I possibly could healing myself and then, and then being able to share that information with other people and um, shine my light on them. And um, so that's why I love that song is just, it's just another message of hope and, an encouragement that um, that you can help other people improve their situation and improve how they feel and restore their health. Wonderful. You're certainly a shining example, Sarah. So uh, <laughs> what remind us of your website again? It's reversingbreastimplantillness.com. Fabulous. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Well, it's, it's afternoon for us. It's uh, early morning for you, as you mentioned. So ha have a great day. Thank you so much for having me, Liam. You as well.